Kenan, I love this place. Oh my God, this is a gem. I can't believe you brought me to this incredible place. I mean, the Cycads are just amazing. And Dale himself, he's, he's a treasure of knowledge. And I learned so much today just being here. I mean, this row has varieties from all over the world. I mean, he's on an acre and a half. When I first came here in 2004, this was one of the places that inspired me. I see he has his dream to grow cycads, and he collected so much of this himself. He went to Cuba and Central America, and he brought the seed back, and just just such a passionate man. Yeah, that's, that's what I love to see too, Tom. Uh, you meet people that are similar to ourselves, that really appreciate whether it be the animals or the plants. And what inspires us is the fact that they actually get out, they get out there, they go see it in the wild. And unfortunately, once Dale, um, you know, passes on, then we lose the knowledge uh, and, and quite a feat that he's been able to do in, in propagating these, huh? I, I'm afraid, I don't know what's gonna, I don't know how much of it I can pick up. I don't know through YouTube if we can encourage other people to get excited about this stuff. But, um, you know, someone has to continue it. Definitely, I mean, these plants have been around since before the age of the dinosaurs. Uh, we wanna make sure that they continue to move into the 21st century here as we, uh, we race forward, man. And these are an interesting plant because of the fact that they're male and female plants. So you can't, you don't just have one, um, one, both sexes on one plant. I've learned so much about cycads. I even got a few variety to bring home, which I can't wait to get in the ground. Uh, and then I like to think I met uh, a new friend who I uh, hope that I'll be able to come back over here and purchase some more plants from because uh, Dale, you've just been great today. I appreciate your generosity with all this knowledge you have here. Oh, thank you so much. Well, I guess let's get home, Tom. I'm excited. I want to get home and get oh, in the ground. Sounds good. Kenan, that tree fern looks super cool. I'm so excited. You told me to put it here, um, and it, it truly is a focal point. I get to sit uh, in my window for my you know breakfast table, my dinner table's right there, and I'm just always looking at it. I love it. I like the, I like what it adds to the garden. Um, and so, you know, I put an irrigation system in, which I'm excited about. Um, I also planted the smaller ferns throughout this area. So I wanted to create kind of, um, I wanted to keep them all in an area where I know they'll do well, where I know I have irrigation. I'm keeping the soil moist. Um, but I was just curious, um, you know, I noticed that, you know, this is browning here. Um, is that okay? Or yeah, so if you look, that's the oldest leaf. Oh, okay. That's the oldest leaf. So you're going to get these new leaves coming up. Right. The thing that you want to watch is you don't want the new leaves to wilt at all. Okay. That's the big thing. If they start wilting, you know you're in trouble. Okay, well then, this might have been from when we actually planted. It's only been a, about a week. Uh, th that's okay then? We are. Yeah, right? that, look, that looks okay. Okay, cool. It's just like a, a, over the whole frond is where we have to look out. Okay. Yes, I mean, that's the only, like I said, the only thing, as long as you don't dry it out, okay. it's going to do fine for you. And it's been very wet here. Let's walk over to the truck. Um, I wanted to just show you guys, you know, since you're generous to give me that. By the way, how about these lilies? Kevin, this looks amazing I after one week. Away. It's been so long since I actually had plants in the water pond because of the turtles. Um, it's really helped the water quality. And just to be honest, it's beautiful. So I'm really partial to the Victorian lilies. But again, I mean, how about these, uh, you know, I forgot you, what the name That's that? Foxfire. Foxfire, so cool. My eye gets drawn right to them. Uh, and then just like I said, for the water quality and, and the shade that they provide for the animals in the water for the fish, it's, it's really cool. So I don't know, I gotta figure out something to do with those turtles because both myself and Kate really love looking out and seeing these lilies here. We just got to figure out how many feet on center we want to plant them. Okay. I'm not sure about that. You just let me know, but I'm really loving this. We have this raised area and we can continue down. You know, maybe I get some more cycads down, the, down here. Obviously you can see where it's low in my property. So it does flood over here, but having this raised bed helps out. I can even pull some of these out a little further and give it more area uh, to plant. But I just, you know, that, that vision of when we were walking 
down uh, Dale's uh, yard, just on either side, the, the uh, side cats. I just love that look. So maybe I can create something similar here where we're just kind of planting them on one side. That would be really, really unique. Um, and, and I just think it, it calls to that. So we had some good rain yesterday. You can see there's some flooding back here. Here's the Godzilla Gardens that you helped me create. Uh, they're looking great. They're very happy with the water we're getting. But again, that's raised up, so they're healthy there as well. Um, but you can see it continues around here, Tom. So um, I think maybe uh, we, we, this would be a good area to plant out because what I'd love to have happen eventually is to create more canopy so that we have more of a shaded walk. There'll be little pathways similar again to what you have and what Dale had. I just kind of like uh, creating this canopy. I, I feel as though we are being hugged by the foliage, you're being embraced by nature. And I want to create that here. That's why I love lushness. That'd be really cool. We just finished up at Kennan's. Now we're going to head over to Jerry Wolf's place, Wolf's World, and we're going to take a look at all those monitors. These are T-negative albino babies. This is their very first handling. I have not picked these guys up yet, other than to transfer them from the, the tray where they were hatching into here. So we will spend a lot of time in our afternoons. They'll be in here for a week before they're ready for food. They'll be absorbing their yolk. So they're just, just four in this clutch. My last two clutches were nine. So now this is a clutch of the albinos that's, what do we say, four months old? Or mid-February. Three? Three months old? And um, this one is a likely a male. I'm sure it's a male. And then the, I don't see any obvious females in this group anymore. They all kind of look like males, but this is the biggest one out of all of them. And you can see this, this is their personality, their level of tameness. They're very calm monitors. We swim them every day in the natural sunlight. So no one that buys from us will end up with a monitor that's afraid of natural UV light. I think that's very important. So this is Alexander, our bigger male sulfur. Very curious animal. Trying to see if your camera is something to eat. This is Forrest. Hey, Forrest. One of our male black dragons. It's going through a good shed. So this is Onyx, a male black-throated monitor. That's a turkey egg, so the membrane's actually quite thick on it, so it's it's hard for him to break it. He's already cracked the shell, but you see the membrane is hanging in there. These guys love eggs. <laughs> Does he eat the shell? Oh, yeah. He was looking for more. Look at that. He didn't swallow the rest of the egg and he just spilled it. There's actually a female you see in the, the lay box watching him. He's gonna eat it with soil and all. This is a a black throated monitor. A black throated this is a female monitor that just laid eggs. In fact, this is a great sign. That means today, probably after you leave, I will block her off in her hide box and dig up some black throat eggs. Which is really exciting. So in here we have a pair of white-throated monitors. The female, we actually interrupted her. She was scratching the ground and she is hunting for earthworms. I'm not handing it to you, buddy. Come on. So he's using his tail almost like it's prehensile. He's actually using it to lock him in and he's using the muscles in his tail to hold his body up as he climbed down. Yes, baby. So people really don't give them 
credit for having a prehensile tail, but they really do use it that way. Now he's a, a cape banded white throat monitor and he's very, very white. Well, thanks for showing me around today, Jerry. My pleasure. I appreciate it. Glad you stopped by. I just got back from West Palm Beach last night. It took me four hours to come back during a terrible thunderstorm. Caesar's backing up the trailer right now and it is filled with all types of exotic cycads. Many of them are going to be for my swamp walk here in Apopka, but I think I got some rare collector ones that I may save, put in the greenhouse for now. This plant is not too good. Is that heavy, Caesar? Pretty heavy. Got it? I want Oh, Caesar, what are they? Caesar, no, they this, these. They're not too heavy. No, they're heavy. <laughs> no, they're, they're not heavy. heavy. No. <laughs> the lady charged me ninety dollars. So be careful with them. That's awful. The five pounds is fine. That's good. That's a good price. No, Caesar, I paid ninety dollars for these oh, paper they're sleeves. Not, they're not good. Well, don't throw them out. You got to keep them, okay? All we right. can reuse them. All right. Okay. Hey, I want to thank you so much. All the comments you left on the YouTube page, I'm taking them all to heart. I decided to redo these turtle enclosures. We're going to take the snapping turtle, give him his own enclosure, and build him a special fence so he cannot climb out. Then we're going to have all the, the map turtles and the Florida pond turtles, and we're going to give them all their own pond. I just don't know how to break it to Caesar. Little problem. Little problem? Two problems, two little problems. Problem number one, all the turtles are in this pond. Why did we build three ponds? I want to build one pond. Do a little, do a little shoveling, one pond. <laughs> yes, we can do you it. You told me you I know, I know, I know. I know. You I know. For this, you're supposed to no more change. I know, no, but listen, listen, you, maybe half a day. You, you, you take the pump, pump it all out, I'll catch the turtles. I'll put the turtles back in the buckets and you just dig one pond. Well, I need to fix it first. I need to fix a little oh, bit. I know, I know, you know? I know. It's, I know it's always. Well, with the big you want? The, about this size. This size. This is the last time you changed, right? For yes, this, no, 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 last time, last time. All right, okay. One other thing. I mix the snapping turtle with the other turtles. Why you said that? I don't want to mix them. I need you to make one more cage. <laughs> oh, this is what I want to do. You have another one. We have three of these ponds, right? Yeah. You go get another one, and how about we put it right here? So this will all be for the red-eared sliders. This whole enclosure will be for the red-eared sliders. This whole enclosure will be for the snapping turtle. Hey, look, look, he's coming to you. Get him. Come on, baby. Man, I don't know if you can see this new pond. This pond here is like 50% bigger than this other pond here. I thought when they came in, they were all three were the same size. You got it? I feel really bad. I'm not gonna make Caesar dig this new pond all by himself. I'm gonna get in and help. I need to finish today. Oh, good job. See, it's all on the knees, Caesar. Yeah, you, you see, you go on my knees. That's you good. Can. You see? Yeah. You see how I. All right. I can maybe do it all day. Maybe uh, two days, maybe three days. Maybe one minute. <laughs>
Well, I just want to introduce you to the new snapping turtle enclosure. We took your advice here and we did a new fence and this time we bent the fence in. We also, we have, we have one enclosure for all the sliders and map turtles and we have a second enclosure just for the snapping turtle. And I'm going to try to put a water lily in here. Woo, Caesar, it's cold. I'm not going to fall down. You think I'm going to fall? <laughs> Probably the only time I'm going in here before we put the snapper in here. No, I don't want to put it in the middle because the sun is to the south. The, I mean, right now the sun's straight, but I want to put it a little bit over, a little bit more to the south. This lily I'm using, this is Madame Grana Walska and I put it on a platform. I do not know if the turtle's gonna eat the lily or not. We're gonna find out. But this water lily is only maybe four inches below the surface of the water. So we'll see what happens. I am, I certainly am water lily rich and turtle poor. So we're gonna put the turtle in his new enclosure. We will see you next week and don't forget to like and subscribe.